much for joining. Uh, just to get us started here, I will do a brief land acknowledgement. So just so you guys are aware, if you weren't already, both our Brantford and Waterloo campuses are located on the Haldeman Tract, which is the ancestral land and territory of the Anishinaabe, Neutral, and Haudenosaunee people. And with that comes a tremendous amount of privilege. And especially coming from this program, we do recognize that. And we often, a lot of history students do enjoy the opportunity to learn about that history every single day. So there's lots of opportunities to learn about that in indigenous ways of culture and learning if you are interested. So with that, I will introduce myself a little bit. Hi, my name is Michelle. I'm currently a fifth year human rights and human diversity student, and I unintentionally started pursuing a minor in history due to the lovely Dr. Han inspiring me and taking so many wonderful courses such as these. So I can't wait for you to hear all about them. I am an avid lover of history now, so I cannot wait to discuss it more. Um, before we get into introducing the real stars of the panel today, I will do a couple housekeeping pieces. So for those of you joining us live, you're welcome to kind of keep our uh, main lobby of open house open on the side. And if you are having any issues with sessions periodically throughout the day, just keep refreshing that page as things are always happening throughout the day. So be sure to do that. If you have any questions for us throughout the entire session, please do put your questions into the Q&A area of uh, Zoom instead of the chat feature. We won't be moderating chat. So please do post every single question you could possibly think of in the Q&A and we would be more than happy to help you with that at the end of our session. So with that, I will let the lovely Dr. Han introduce herself and then we'll go to the rest of the panel. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Han. I am not sure if I'm lovely, but thank you so much, Michelle, for that introduction. I am the program coordinator of uh, the Brand for History program. It's so great to see you all. Amazing, Madison, over to you. Hello, everybody. I am a third year of the history program. I don't know if I stalled there for a bit. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> um, I'm a third year part of the history program. Uh, I did not come in. I transferred, actually. So it's a bit different than everybody else who may have come right from high school, but I can help you answer a lot of questions if you have any. And I'm enjoying a lot of what Laurier has to offer at the Brantford campus. Amazing. And then over to you, Robert. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Robert. I'm a second year history major um, and I'm minoring in criminology. And you know, I'm very excited for everyone to be joining us or watching this video whenever they are. And I hope you all come to Laurier Brantford. Amazing, thank you so much. And then last but certainly not least, Tyler, over to you. Hello everybody, I, uh, I'm Tyler uh, and I am a history alumni. So I graduated last April Yes, correct. Had to think about that for a second. Feels like a lifetime ago uh, from the history program with a minor in English. And I loved every second of it. And that's I can say that with uh, the utmost confidence. Amazing. And I think that's something we're probably going to hear a lot of from everyone on this panel today. So I'm excited for that. Um, but with that, we'll get things started. So welcome again, everyone in the live audience and Dr. Han, over to you. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, once again. I'll do a short presentation introducing our program and our courses, our faculty, our amazing student association, and I'll ask our panelists to chime in as they see fit. Okay, Laurier Branford History Program. Why study history at Laurier Branford? Short answer, it's an amazing program. It's an excellent program. Um, we pride ourselves in personalized learning experience, small class sizes, amazing faculty, uh, really close-knit um, history student association, and amazing and innovative courses. So I'm going to try to touch upon all these points. Starting off, we are a really caring uh, community. And you, what you are seeing here is some of our faculty members and our past students. Um, we are different from the Waterloo campus in the sense that um, our specialty is public history. We have a lot of public historians teaching in our program. So briefly introducing our faculty members, we have Dr. Brookfield, who specializes in Canadian history, um, as well as women and gender and children's history. And this is her book, Our Voices Must Be Heard. We also have Dr. Rob Christofferson, who also is a public historian, and his most recent publication includes this comic book. He, he didn't do the illustrations, but he, he published this amazing comic book on Hamilton's labor history. 
We also have Dr. Jeff Spur, who is a British historian, and um, he specializes in the history of YMCA in, uh, in Europe, uh, especially in, in Britain. We have also Dr. Olivier, who is a uh, military historian. He goes into a lot of details when he gets, uh, when in his classes on um, naval history, um, and that is his book. We also have Dr. Frugia, who is um, a military historian. He, he looks at World War I and World War II. And me, I, I specialize in Asian history. I'm a curator and also a digital uh, humanist. And that's me. Um, I'm a research associate at the Royal Ontario Museum. And that's an older photo of me uh, working at the ROM. All right. Um, in our program, we really believe in well, our, our motto is people make history. And once a year, actually twice a year, we run people make history lecture series. And last year we invited um, the first Miss World um, who was non-white to join us and give us a wonderful presentation about her experience uh, winning the first Miss World competition as a, um, as a non-white contestant. It was an amazing uh, lecture, which you could actually watch on our website. We, um, we have amazing courses, including tour courses. So um, I think this was run three times already in the past. Uh, our faculty members, especially Dr. Uh, Ferugia and Dr. Olivier would take a group of students to Europe and do their battlefield tour course and uh, take students to like different locations uh, that Canadian soldiers fought in Europe. So these are photos from their uh, battlefield tour course. And um, we also teach memory monuments and museum courses. And Tyler right there is laughing because he was in this course when I uh, offered it in 2000 and was it 18, I believe, or was it 19? I forget. It was uh, 2019 and I'm laughing because I believe I'm cropped out of that photo. I was definitely I so there when sorry, that was taken. Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> so as uh, this course is called Memory Monuments and Museums, it includes uh, placement, which we'll, uh, which I'll get to very shortly. But I invited all my students, including Tyler, to create an original exhibit called uh, Branford, Our Immigrant Stories. It was an amazing experience. And we also did, um, uh, what is this, interactive um, display in our research and academic center lobby and this is what it looked like. Students also put together an exhibit at the Brent Museum and Archives and you're looking at some photos from that. Um, our, our classes include mandatory placement and here we have some photos of our students working at a local archive. We also do placement at Myrtleville House Museum. Right now, um, I am supervising a group of students who are in that particular class. They're doing their placement for the Canadian Industrial Heritage Center, and they're creating a website for that organization. So as part of our coursework, students can get to do a lot of different things, including creating exhibits, doing like digital archive work, right? And even helping out at local heritage organizations. We also take great pride in the fact that um, we offer innovative courses. And the course that I'm currently teaching is History 392, Popular Cultures of East Asia. And guess what? Madison, Michelle, and Rob are in my class. So they can talk about that. It's a popular course. And Madison did a special video on uh, Puku Pukuro. Madison, would you like to talk about what this is? It's... Okay, and Fukubukuro is a practice where um, it starts in like the Meiji era Japan, kind of like the department stores when it kind of got popular. At the end of the year, there's this whole tradition of selling old things, getting rid of old things. So shop owners at the time put together these like lucky bags. It's actually what the term translates into close to English. And that kind of has, it's a really big thing. It's popular, you get special edition stuff for every new year, but it has translated as we watch as culture goes to all of our, you know, loot crate boxes and like unboxing videos that people all do. So it has an origin point, I find, in Fukubukuro, which I, I think it's interesting. There's like, a, there's a whole, you can get basically anything, food, comics, um, games, anything. It's fascinating. 
So this was a video that I asked my students to produce. And uh, Robert did his video on South Korean government's influence uh, in the arts. Robert, five second intro of your video. Well, I essentially just kind of discussed, you know, South Korea's government's influence in the arts, as the title would imply. And uh, just essentially, you know, how they kind of encourage their stuff to get popular globally. All right, Michelle did hers on Samurai in the gaming industry. Yeah, so mine was actually about specifically the fascination in AAA gaming for Feudal Japan specifically, as well as ninjas uh, and samurai culture, Bushido, the whole thing. So there's a whole bunch of really fascinating stuff in there I could probably talk about for an hour. <laughs> yes, uh, but given the time, we'll stop right there. I'm also teaching a fourth year um, seminar, seniors, uh, senior honors thesis course, History 499. It's called Theories and Practices of Visual Arts in Pre-Modern and Contemporary East Asia. And for that particular course, students had to create this like, virtual exhibit um, on their own. And this is an image of, of a virtual exhibit one of our students created. Fantastic, beautiful. And they also had to do a catalog, which you're looking at right now. So moving on very quickly, um, our students have done really, really well um, after their graduation. One of our alumni includes Cody Grote, who just got a job at Western um, as a historian. So we are very happy for Cody. And we also have Dalton Rockcliffe, who is now doing his PhD at York. Um, yeah, and a lot of our students have done really well. Um, one of our former students getting an award at our uh, research uh, event. So he won the top place in this, uh, the, I guess, ACERS, which is um, a acronym for Academic Engaged and Creative Research um, uh, Competition that Laurier Bradford holds once a year. And there's cash prize if you win first place. All right. Uh, briefly about our History Students Association, we have done a lot of amazing events and um, last year we did our holiday lunch at Hudson's Public, which is in downtown. In the past, we have done um, field trips to Canadian War Plain Heritage Museum. Here's an old photo of our students from, from those times. We also hold a lot of events, and that is me holding, uh, hosting our annual Lunar New Year celebration. And Tyler was a very important part of all that event in the past. Tyler, would you like to briefly talk about uh, what this event is all about? Um, the Lunar New Year celebration was always great because um, it was just a way for starters for a lot of people to learn about things they kind of you don't even think about like it's a major holiday it's a major cultural and historical thing and Dr. Han kind of would very cleanly bring it to Brantford once a year with a different theme and uh, I believe that year's theme was clothing I'm gonna say but we did sports one year um, I believe the last year we did before COVID I think we did art because I remember we learned how to do haiku and like paint with like ink um, and it was always a, a really cool thing and it's an engaging way to be kind of connected with the whole Laurier community. Um, one kind of anecdote is there's always a lot of international students that get very excited <laughs> about it. Yes, right. Um, these are just a small examples of all the wonderful things that we do here at Laurier Bamford. Um, Pre-COVID years ago, we also did a lot of outdoor activities and this is my backyard. <laughs> students have come to my backyard. We did, like, you know, back backyard bonfire. We did lunch and it was really good. Um, just hanging out with students and faculty. And that really wonderfully captures the spirit of Gloria Brantford's history program. And just to summarize, community service learning is a very important part of our, our um, Brantford history program. Um, student research is a really important um, focus as well. Um, yeah, great. Personalized learning, small class sizes, amazing faculty, and fantastic student community. All the reasons why you should come and join Gloria Bamford. So come join us. This is the end of my presentation. All right, amazing. Thank you so much.
Okay, beautiful. Now with that, if there are any questions from our live audience, please do put those into the Q&A because we are so, so excited and more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, but until then, I will move to some very popular questions that we do have recurring quite often, whether students realize they have the question or not. So I'll probably start things off with history on the Brantford campus in particular. Obviously we know it's offered on both campuses and both are extremely unique and amazing in their own ways. So what I might do is actually go over to Madison maybe. Can you speak a little bit to why you chose the Brantford campus maybe for a different experience and kind of where your headspace was at when you were thinking about that whole process? Well, previously I had done schooling in Toronto and uh, there's, there's a lot of students there and I'd wanted something that was smaller in class wise. I wanted something that I felt was more engaging is I'm a talker and I don't know if anybody's ever realized that everybody's had classes with me. We all know this. And I'd wanted something that was a little bit engaging. And I know a lot of the history within Brantford because I grew up there and it just put two and two together. It felt like the right move. And then also, once I got to know the faculty and everything else a bit more, I was like, yes, this was the best decision I did for myself. Amazing. I definitely know where you're coming from on that, too. I'm also a talker. <laughs> um, so I, I think Dr. Han knows that, too, by now. Um, so maybe over to you, Robert. I think I would love to hear your perspective on that as well. Yeah, kind of on a similar note, um, when I was coming out of high school, I mean, obviously, you know, universities would have fairs and our school is kind of trying to lure us in. And I was very unsure of where I wanted to go. Um, kind of like what Maz was saying, I really wanted a smaller community. And so the representative from Laurier kind of mentioned, you know, the Brantford campus is very small and very, you know, has a good sense of community. And that was very important to me because, you know, I wanted somewhere where I could connect with professors and, you know, other students. And I wasn't just, you know, one in 1000 in a lecture hall where nobody knew my name. And so, I mean, Brantford's kind of perfect for that because Dr. Han, you know, I think by now kind of knows me quite well for better or worse. And so I, that's been very exciting and, you know, very different from what I expected from university when you hear these horror stories of, you know, 400 people lecture halls. Well, maybe you, should, you guys should comment on how small our classes are. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I can speak to the some first year level classes first, then maybe we can go to uh, Tyler for some second and third year uh, class sizes just to diversify things up a little bit. Uh, so when I was in my first year, I decided to go on a whim and take a class called Ancient History in a Global Context with Dr. Han. And that's yeah, Tyler was there. And that was how it all began for me. And I was immediately addicted to history classes from that point on. And that class, I believe, was in our medium sized lecture hall in an old movie theater building, funnily enough. And we had generally anywhere from, I would say, 50 ish students frequently attending at that point. So, uh, and that's starting in your first year. So, class sizes really are quite small, especially at this program on this campus. So, Tyler, what was your experience in us uh, in second, third, and fourth year classes? Well, for, for starters, Michelle, I was in that class and I will remember that was it. That, that, that's a pretty big class for a history class for starters. But I will say uh, Dr. Han still made it feel like I was a recognized individualized person. And I vividly remember and I'm not I, this is not just a story I'm saying because we're in a open house presentation. I went into that class, as Robert said, full of the horror stories. I was like, I'm just a number now. Like, you know, it isn't like high school or like middle school or whatever. And I remember first day, Dr. Han was like, I'm going to learn all of your names. And I was like, there's 50 people in here. <laughs> Actually, there were more than 50 people. There were more, more like, you know, 90, 80 to okay. 90. Oh, it was yeah. a few years ago. Dr. Han clearly has a more accurate picture than we do. <laughs> Dr. Han was at the front of the room. Uh, and she did remember our names, uh, at least if you showed up to class and participated. She And maybe she knew you if you didn't as well. But um, moving away from that, um, classes just kind of taper off and get smaller as you go. And that's not a bad thing. Um, like, I think of my third year uh, Modern Europe course taught by Peter Ferugia. I think there was... 35 people in that class and he ran it as if it was a seminar so we had to talk a lot and it was i learned so much uh, and that was one of the courses that was interrupted by the very first wave of covid and it still i learned i got a lot out of that class um and as i say it kind of tapers down um my fourth year seminar which as a history student you have to take uh taught by dr olivier last april uh was uh six people and we got to know each other very well. You have to read, you write a very long paper and everybody else reads your paper and asks you questions about it. Uh, you feel very professional. And I remember being in first year, I remember going to one of these kind of intros and 
I, somebody, I believe it was Tara or somebody brought it up and was like, Hey, you're going to have to do this in fourth year. And I was like, that's intense. Like hanging out with four people and having to write a long paper and having them judge it. But then I got there and I knew everybody already. I was like these other four people. I, I'm aware of who they are and they know who I am. And it's, it was a great experience. Sorry. I just, Madison made the joke about being a talker and I've talked longer than everybody combined. So I'll we'll stop now. <laughs> no, I love it. I love the constant conversation. It makes me very happy. Um, so moving on a little bit to continue that on that tangent, uh, a lot of history students really want to know about some of the unique classes. And I know Dr. Han already touched on that. Um, so I would love to open up the floor for kind of a speed round of some of the more really cool classes you can take on this campus, because I think that's one of the larger misconceptions that a lot of people have about this history program being on a smaller campus. They think there might be less opportunity or maybe less cool classes to take. So we know that not to be the case, but uh, maybe Robert, since you're in your second year, you said maybe you could highlight for us a little bit of your experiences and some of the classes that you've taken that might've really resonated with you in the last couple of years. Yeah, well, the two that I'm kind of taking right now, Memories, Monuments, Museum, and Popular Culture in East Asia were both mentioned by Dr. Han. And I mean, they're much different than I ever expected a university class to be, rather than kind of being about like, you know, academic history and kind of, you know, about long-winded events or, you know, very popular figures. It's very much so about like kind of the grassroots of what was going on or, you know, kind of things that are off to the side, which I think is so exceptional because I think that very much so gets skimmed over in history a lot of times. And so not only, you know, am I focusing on something I wouldn't necessarily learn about outside of that, but I'm also getting kind of like Tyler was saying, the opportunity to discuss it in a very small group setting, which actually really boosts your opportunity to learn as opposed to just listening to a professor talk for, you know, an hour and a half. When you get to engage with the material and you're talking about something interesting and something fresh, it definitely helps your learning and kind of, you know, makes it a very exceptional experience. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing that. And, you know, as soon as you were saying that, it immediately reminded me of the way that not only Dr. Han, but so many uh, faculty members on this campus as well have kind of rejigged their style of lecturing since the pandemic. And maybe Dr. Han, you could speak to your amazing tech talents and how you've changed your lecture styles over the last few years and how it's really become more of a seminar style over the last few years. And just honestly, I wanted you to showcase your amazing talent in that way. So please do speak to that. Um, so since COVID started, I really had to be like a YouTuber, I guess. So, so I recorded God knows how many lecture videos, hundreds of lecture videos, and I, I try to make them fun and engaging, um, including a lot of visuals, which I always love to do, um, personal anecdotes, and yeah, and, and I make them into like short video, like 15, 10 to 15 minutes long and students can watch them um, as their schedule fits. And I guess all of you except Tyler have watched my lecture videos. Like, what do you think of them? Do you find them to be fun? And, and, and also, um, and I converted the regular lecture time into seminar um, and students can, can have a uh, full class time for discussion, uh, questions, and lots of activities. Uh, so it's been really great. Yeah, for sure. I've had a lot of fun doing those, to be honest. But before I pull a Tyler, as they say, and keep going with talking, uh, maybe I'll give uh, Madison the floor to speak to uh, kind of your perspective on this different style of lectures that we've been experiencing. I always find I learn more when we're asking questions and coming up with our own explanations ourselves to how we connect it to other topics. Um, a lot of the times um, in, the, in your classes, uh, students ask questions that I would have never considered thinking about asking that relate to our readings and things like this. So I always find that to be really engaging. Also, you get to see what other people are saying, and it might even change your opinion on what was being said. And really, if we talk about history, historians and how they engage with each other, we always talk, like you learn from each other as you are also looking at primary sources and other things. So it's kind of teaching that skill to happen like right away rather than, learn, rather than learning it later. Just to clarify, in seminars, students become discussion leaders, right? And um, they have to sign up to lead particular uh, lectures and they will have to do the readings before and come up with discussion questions. 
and come to class and lead the discussion, of course, together with me. And it's a really interactive and fun and engaging uh, learning experience. And I learn a lot from my students too. Absolutely. And uh, oftentimes we even have very, very long questions that students create. Uh, sometimes we'll have uh, pretty much an entire screen length of a question because a student just decided to make the most lengthy question ever with so much preface. Um, but it's a lot of fun and it's a really uh, unique opportunity to, like Dr. Han said, just get to know the people in your class, get some experience with communicating with one another. Uh, I don't know about the rest of you, but since the pandemic, I think a lot of us have become a little bit more quiet and isolated, maybe used to our homes and that's okay. But getting the opportunity to open back up again has been truly, truly amazing. Um, so before I facilitate another question, Dr. Han, is there something else you would like to draw our attention to, uh, potentially talk about any of our uh, community service learning opportunities in the program, things like that before I keep badgering with questions? <laughs> Brantford has so many heritage organizations and our students can do internships, placements, summer jobs. There's so many museums here um, just in the proximity of our campus. And just going to Laurier Brantford, you, you will have access to a lot of these community learning opportunities as well as job opportunities. Some of our graduates are now working in like local museums here because there are jobs and because they have been uh, receiving the training that they need for that job over the course of their university education. So it, it's it's been great. Absolutely. So on that tangent, Tyler, that brings me nicely over to you. As an alumni member, an alumni member of the history program, I would love to kind of hear, uh, or I think the members of the live audience as well as on-demand audience later would love to hear kind of your experience with getting involved on campus, uh, kind of how you've ended up in your current position and how as a history student, you have all these opportunities to really get involved with not only the program, but the university. I'm a big fan of being involved on campus. Um, for to be totally transparent, I currently work for the university uh, as a member of the Dean of Students Office. Obviously, that's pretty far removed from the history program, but I was also very involved with the history program. Um, uh, kind of to echo what Dr. Han just said about community service, like learning things, uh, in uh, the 2019 version of Memory Monuments Museums, we did that, obviously, we did that amazing project where we kind of made a localized museum exhibit. We also did a placement. Um, I was placed at the Bell Homestead, so Alexander Graham Bell's historical house, um, and we helped them design like a kind of small exhibit. Um, and through those connections and connections through that class, I was able to get a job, a temp job at the Brant Museums for that summer. So 2019, I really learned a lot about Brantford. Um, and that's if I am to tangent just to splinter off a little bit, I will loop it back is that is one of the reasons that I love history at the Brantford campus is because of Brantford's history. Um, a lot of it's not pretty. I won't lie. Obviously, there was a land acknowledgement at the start of this. It's it's yeah, it, a lot of the history is not pretty, but there is a lot of it. And you can examine a lot of different disciplines of through of history through the lens of Brantford. So Dr. Hans obviously done a lot of work on the history of immigrants. There's a lot of history to do with indigeneity and indigenous peoples of this area, obviously, uh, as is uh, most places, Holman Tract, et cetera. Um, not to downplay that at all. Uh, and there's a lot of industrialized history. Um, Brantford obviously was a farming industrial town. Uh, there's a fact they love to say at the museum that for a certain period in the late 1800s, it went uh, Toronto, Montreal, Brantford in terms of industrial output, uh, which you don't really think of. Um, and obviously I wouldn't know any of that without the fact that I was kind of walking the beat in the community. Um, I was lucky enough in my fourth year to take part in a, a specialized course uh, with Dr. Brookfield where we researched the history of polio in Brantford, which was obviously timely given the COVID. Um, that was why we did it. Uh, we related two generations or one generation's experience in two quarantines. We interviewed uh, many lovely, lovely local elderly people and kind of mined them for experience on what they remember about polio and how they thought of COVID was going at the time. This was, of course, September 2020. So a lot of them, and including us, if you listen to the recordings, read the report, we were like, we'll be out of this soon. It's 2022. Let's be optimists, though, obviously. Uh <laughs> Um, yes, and finally, I will loop this out and cease talking in that 
One of the greatest things is the History Students Association. I was president of it last year. I was vice president before that. Robert and Madison are both heavily involved. Um, and it's pretty hard to avoid joining the HSA. Like if you're a history student in Brantford, you have to actively try to not avoid it, which not to name names, there was a few of them. Uh, <laughs> but it is uh, maybe I, Madison or Robert, you're actively part of that. I don't want to upstage you, Michelle, but I could kind of throw this long winded answer over to them. If you want to talk about the HSA. Yeah, I mean, I can hop in quickly. Um, I'm currently the treasurer of the HSA and next year I'll be the president of the HSA. I know, big responsibility. <laughs> um, but I think what's really great about the HSA is, you know, as kind of what we mentioned, you know, a smaller community, a very kind of tightly knit department is that the HSA kind of really brings an opportunity for the students to get to know, get to know each other outside of class. Um, I think one of the great things we do is, or we've been trying to restart ever since, you know, COVID kind of put a damper on things is a uh, monthly lunch where, you know, the students meet up at a local Brantford restaurant, uh, you know, order some food on the university's tab and kind of in chat with each other and have a good time. Um, and I mean, as university students, you can't really pass up a free lunch. So even if you don't want to hang out with the HSA, you know, you'll still get dragged out to it as Tyler was mentioning. Um, and I think it's just kind of a great opportunity to get to know professors and other students and kind of, you know, interact in a less formal setting or, you know, something a little outside of the academic sphere, which is always very important, I think, in kind of building experience and kind of getting to know people and, you know, engaging the community you're part of. Amazing. I think that was amazing and beautiful, beautiful. Tyler, you don't have to feel bad at all for taking over there. That was wonderful. Um, so thank you for doing that. Um, Madison, are you, I think I also met, heard that you're also involved in the HSA. Maybe you could speak yes. to some of your experiences in that. And I know you mentioned earlier, you're involved with some current uh, off-campus stuff as well. So I would love to hear that perspective too. Um, I am the vice president of HSA and I will be the vice president again. Oh, um, I do a lot of our, um, create all of our posters and a bunch of stuff. I actually redid our logo and things like that. Um, I enjoy that creative side and it, I, I enjoy it a lot. It's nice to be able to use those skills again and because I do for <laughs> to be able to put it to something that's like, it also, I hope encourages others to socialize and have fun. Uh, I really, one of the events they went to was they went on a walk around town and they, um, you were there, Dr. Han, Robert was there. I was not there, but I hear all the stories when we went to lunch about how they had fun and all these other things. So I was like, I wish I was there. Sorry, y'all. But it, when you, like, we are all separated a lot and we were like, that's one of the things we've all noticed in the past little while, being able to connect in person and discuss has been really important. Um, one of the things I have been doing off campus is actually associated with monuments, histories, and museums. I uh, actually have a museum plan placement at the Brent Archives for creating an exhibit about Brantford throughout different decades, which is really fascinating. There's so much little things. My favorite story we have learned so far is about Horace King, who was a dairy. Uh, he delivered dairy in the city, and his horse's name was Queenie, and like it's just, it's too much. It's so good. You, and it's like 30 years of doing that. And that's part of the, he was like locally known everywhere and went to different companies and stuff like this. So little bits of history and stuff like that, that you learn about within the area is also really fascinating. Um, also what I found is that you get to engage more again, since a, a lot of classes I've been taking were off campus, but now that we're back on campus, I am enjoying so much to be able to talk to everybody in everybody has their own different spin on how they can discuss and it's fascinating. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. Now I'm going to go back to Dr. Han and see if there's anything else you would like us to touch on or round out before we uh, start to wrap up this wonderful session. Are there any questions uh, from our wonderful audience here? Don't be shy. <laughs> yeah, don't be shy. Really? Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Absolutely. I always find that it's almost a compliment when you don't have questions popping up because in my heart, I try to think of it as uh, us answering all the questions as we go. So I try and think of it as a good thing. Um, so I'm going to put two thumbs up there. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for this amazing uh, panel. And to summarize, um, I, I really love this community. Um, Prior to joining Laurier Branford, I taught at U of T. And I always tell my students, the smallest class I taught at U of T had 120 students. 
I barely got to know any of them, right? That was like the smallest class. And coming to Laurier Brantford, the first class, I walk into my first class, I was blown away because I had like 35 students in my second year class. And I had to really change the way I teach uh, to be more interactive, uh, to be more engaging. And sometimes I even um, change the, the syllabus and curriculum based on the students' interests. And I think it's really, really important that um, that we do that. that. And we are able to do that because we are a smaller community. We are more flexible, we are more adaptable, and we are more innovative. It's so much easier when our classes are small and we know the students that we could try some really cool things that, um, that we haven't tried before. So during COVID, was it, yeah, it was last year, I designed, um, game assignments. I asked students to des design either like board games or like computer games based on East Asian history. And it was so fun um, just looking at what they have created and how they translated what they learned in class into these creative uh, outlets. And that's the spirit of, of Gloria Bramford. And as our amazing students here, Madison, Michelle, Tyler, and Robert can um, can also testify. So thank you everyone for joining us today. And I look forward to seeing you on campus. If you have any questions, if you wanna do a tour, send me an email. Uh, you can find my email on our website and I'll be more than happy to connect with you personally. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Han. Uh, and just to add on to that tangent, if you are with us, whether it be live currently or you're watching us on demand right now, um, you can always interact with our Discord community as well if you have any questions related to how to learn more about the History Student Association, being a current student, getting involved, anything like that. Um, so if you haven't joined the Discord server and you would like to, you can access that from the main page of the Open House site. So it'll be right there in the middle and it'll be grayish. You cannot miss it. So if you have any questions later on, on. I'd be happy to answer those for you throughout the day. But otherwise, thank you so much for being here, everyone, and taking time out of your busy, rainy Saturday afternoon. Uh, it was such an amazing time to see you all and chat about the history program on our Brantford campus. So be sure to stay connected. And like Dr. Han said, we hope to see you all on campus in the fall, fingers crossed. But have a wonderful day, everyone, and take care.